Welcome to Politics Done Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. We are going to have a great program for you today. Good morning, Houston. Good morning, Harris County. Good morning, Texas. Good morning, the United States of America. And of course, without further ado, good morning to the world. How is everybody doing this morning? We're going to have a great show for you today, as usual. But you know who's the star of the show? You guys are. So don't forget, gear it up to call 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Hit extension 2 to get to us. Extension 1 to donate. Remember, we're still in fun drive. But in as much as we're in fun drive, we're making sure to give you a program, a substantive program. But without further ado... I go to the control room where one of the two of our geniuses is there today. It's Jack Van Beber. Good morning, Jack. How are you doing this morning? Good morning, Egberto. How are you? I am doing fine, Jack. How are you doing? I know you have a slight head cold. I hope you're feeling a little bit better, my dear brother. Well, it's just the season. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> I know what you mean, you know, especially with climate change and everything being out of whack. The pollen is out when it shouldn't be, that this is out when it shouldn't be. But you know what, Jack? That's what that's what we got for now. Yeah, we're going to have to deal with it. What's the word of Matter the day, my fact, brother? What's the word of the day? The word is about climate change today. Have oh, you noticed wow. the songbirds aren't singing? I've seen a few mockingbirds but I have not heard them sing, nor the Bob White quail, nor the, nor the meadow lark with its bright yellow breast. I've heard the owl, I've heard the doves coo, but no marking, mockingbird song. Wow. Uh, wow. Why, Jack? Wow. Why? Uh, I just, uh, you know, I've been back in Texas a couple of years now, and I just haven't heard a mockingbird sing yet. They they have a beautiful, they beautiful song. They they mimic all the other birds' song, and they'll run through all the birds' uh, calls, and it's just fascinating to listen to. And I miss it very much. And I wonder how far north you have to go before you hear the mockingbirds sing, because they don't seem to be singing on the coast. Yikes, yikes, you know, yikes. there's so much that's happening because of this climate change thing. But anyhow, folks, uh, uh, thank you for that. Jack, always have something different and insightful to start the program. Anyway, folks, don't forget, there are many ways to get our show. You can go ahead and turn the dial to 90.1 FM, Houston. You can also always reach us by going to our uh, website, uh, kpft.org, and click that listen button, listen to us live. But while you're there, why not just hit that donate button and, you know, help support the program uh, with a kind donation. Remember to do it in the name of Politics Then Right so that we can be appropriately credited. You can watch us on Facebook by going to facebook.com slash kpft Houston. That's facebook.com slash kpft Houston. You can also Watch us on YouTube by going to politicsdoneright.tv, politicsdoneright.tv. And of course, for the uh, podcast, you can go to politicsdoneright.com slash podcast for anything we don't. Well, actually, the whole thing is there. But, you know, there are times that because you come first, we don't get to cover all the items we planned to cover. You can also send me, drop me a line. Egberto, I don't like this. I like this. I want you to cover this. Whatever you want to say. I don't take anything personally. If you think I need to be, uh, you want to address me on issues, either address me on air. I have a pretty thick skin. Or you can uh, drop me a line at kpft at politicsdoneright.com. That is kpft at politicsdoneright.com. But anyway, folks, please do remember. We are in fun drive, and as such, we ask your contributions to keep the station alive, 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Hit extension 1 to give a little something to the station. Extension number 2, if you want to be on air with me, what, what's bothering you now? What do you think is the speakership 
in the house driving you crazy? Do you realize the conditions that our country is in right now? Do you understand how the rest of the world is looking at us for various reasons, not only because of our dysfunctional government, but much, much, much more? 713-526-5738. I want to give a, a big thank you to Harold yesterday for giving a very kind uh, contribution. Then as we speak, I am trying to get to the other folks that uh, were, were, were kind enough to uh, really, really help us out to get to, uh, in, in an attempt to get to our goal. As I've mentioned before, um, our goal for this show is uh, $5,000. And, uh, uh, you know, even though it's been kind of slow raising, we know that with your help, we are going to get there. We we have the faith that I would like, you know, I don't really believe in faith. What we have is we have the, the near certainty that the entire Houston is going to come through to ensure that we can continue to have this program and to make sure that it's viable. Today's program is titled GM Huge Profits. Houston mayoral candidate said, lock up those we fear. Democrats to admonish, admonish DA Kim Og. So there's a lot to talk about today. Much to talk about today. So you want to give us a call, 713-526-5738. Hit extension number one to donate. Hit extension number two to speak on air. Uh, Harold, really, really, again, want to thank you for the great, uh, great contribution yesterday. Foster Rincon, want to thank you as well. Daniel, thank you so kindly for your contribution yesterday, as well as Melissa. And you know what? I need to run down uh, some of our list here. I don't know if I've mentioned everybody, but we have Katie, Augustine, Kurt, Ravi, Richard, Kelvin, Steve, Carl. Hadir, Suzanne, Trim. That is uh, donations to the show thus far for this period. I want to thank you all for your great support of the program. And rest assured, you'll be hearing something from me at the end of this drive to thank you so kindly. And for those who took advantage of uh, given uh, given that that stuff where I said, hey, for the folks who or who for the folks who uh your work and society have been kind to you to to give you a lot give you the avenue to be able to use your intellect to get a lot consider giving a little bit more can you give five hundred dollars to the program remember this really goes to kpfd none of it goes to me can you give $1,000? Can you give $2,000? Can you give $5,000? Whatever you can. But remember, this is to keep a community radio station on air. We are also trying to get a lot of sustainers. Sustainers would prevent us from having to do this every quarter, sometimes a bit more than every quarter when uh, we don't meet our goals. But we don't like doing this. I'm getting to the show in a minute, but I just want to get to this. We don't like having fun drives. We just have to have fun drives to pay for a 100,000 watt transmitter that transmitted to the entire Houston metropolitan area, it's parts of Louisiana, up north, the northeast takes us into the Piney Woods, etc. Uh, so we have to do this. 713-526-5738, extension number one to donate, extension number two to speak on air. And you know what? I'd love to have you call in to speak on air as well. But please call in and contribute as well. 713-526-5738. Extension number one to donate. Extension number two to be on air. Okay. GM Huge Profits. Houston mayoral candidate lock up those we fear. He said, Dems to admonish DA Og. GM workers ramped up their strike as the company made huge profits. Houston mayoral candidate John Whitmer, uh, you know, I, I, he was on PBS yesterday and I got a call from um, one of the precinct chairs and say, hey, guy, did you know that the uh, one of the leading mayor 
candidates is going to be on air on H at um, the public radio station. I said, oh, didn't know that. I got a question for him. So I went ahead and I asked the question. And uh, his answer was not what I find satisfactory. In fact, to some extent, it was a bit scary. But we'll talk about that as the second subject. Democrats to admonish D.A. Kimag uh, for going after Democrats for no reason. No, I interviewed a precinct chair that signed that petition. And I think at the next CEC meeting, something is likely to occur with the DA, with an admonition of the DA or something of that sort. Because again, going after those just because of a pet peeve, not because of anything legal, is not why one elects a district attorney. One elects a district attorney to apply the law equally across the board, irrespective of party affiliation. But it's concerning when someone of your party come after you not for, well, we'll talk, get to that later, or we may get to that later. Anyway, the ones I want to start with, though, is the striking workers, because yesterday or recently, uh, GM came out with great profits, $3.1 billion over one quarter. Uh, Jake Johnson from Common Dreams said it this way. He wrote a piece titled, UAW responds to record GM revenue by striking at company's most profitable plants. That's what you got to do. You have to let them know you're not playing. Because again, you have to ask yourself, when will the working class share from the spoils of their labor? I repeat, when will the working class, and most of you listening to this program right now, form a part of the working class? I am the working class. Whether you're an engineer, you're a lawyer, you're a doctor, all these people make up a part of the working class. The other class are the ones who just move around pieces of paper to make some money. A doctor heals. A lawyer makes sure that, that legal systems move around. An engineer creates and designs. A scientist studies so that the engineer can take his knowledge and build something. A teacher, a professor, makes sure that knowledge goes forward from generation to generation. But those that move paper and that's all that they do. They, they, they build on the labor of others. That's not the working class. I mean, are they necessary in our current economic system? Yes, they are. Do they warrant what they make? Absolutely not. Do they take much more than their fair share based on what they, th that they make commensurate with the work they do? Absolutely so. And those are the things that we must work to take care of. The reasons you don't have good health care, the reason you don't have good child care, the reason why Social Security is not as much as it should be to give you real Social Security. It's because of those who, one, refuse to pay taxes, their responsibility to society, and those who find all the different manners to say I make my money work for me. Please, if you are a, a casual saver, uh, a casual investor, please don't say, I make my money work for me. Because in effect, you're saying, I am skimming off of others. I'm not talking about getting general interest or just a little bit of stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those who really abuse the system. Anyway, roughly 5,000 United Auto Workers members Walk, walked off the job at General Motors' most profitable plant in North America on Tuesday, shortly after the company posted earnings that surpassed Wall Street's expectations, reporting nearly $3.1 billion in third quarter profits. We're not talking about profits for the year. We're talking about third quarter profits. In other words, after you pay all your bills, after you pay all your taxes, after you pay your employees, after you pay everything, 
you end up with $3.1 billion in profits. Now, remember, <laughs> what the, the, the strikers are asking for over five years, I believe, only cost the company, uh, the companies, as I recall, all of them combined, if I recall correctly, I could be wrong, but it's in the, I, I'm in the ballpark, $7 billion. For all the workers over several years, so in other words, just a piece of a year or so's profit that just GM alone is going to make, to which they say no. They don't want to give these raises commensurate with what the workers are doing. But the executives, the ones who sit down in an air-conditioned office, the ones who fly in private planes, the ones who simply sit back and say, oh, we made a lot of profits, therefore my bonus goes all the way up. I did nothing to increase profits, but all I did is I said, I am going to create inflation. You know, everybody says, inflation is bad. Blame Biden. Blame Bidenomics. Inflation is high. Inflation is not controlled in the aggregate by your government. In a capitalist society, whoever raises prices, whoever has price and power, are the ones that create inflation. Now, there are certain externalities that can create inflation. I mean, when we had the flu of a lot of birds, a lot of chickens, they had to be, they had to be euthanized because the, the virus was going around and killing chicken after chicken after chicken. So we had for a time a lesser amount of eggs. Not a shortage because there was never a time you could go to the grocery store and not buy eggs. You, you never went to the store and saw the eggs missing. But they increased the prices. So people used a little less eggs so that uh, by using a little bit less eggs, you never lost the big supply. So pro supply and demand does work. Okay, Supply and demand does work when it's done fairly without really hurting the individual. Because again, if, if there's an avian flu or whatever, we have less eggs, so we start eating less eggs and we may go to uh, some, other, some other thing that we have for breakfast since the eggs are more expensive. So the average person can do just fine. You eat something other than eggs, the, the demand for eggs drop. And after that drops, uh, the, the manufacturers start to build up their supply of chickens again. More eggs become plentiful. The price of eggs drop. And you, all of that is a normal sale in any economic cycle. Whether, whatever economic system you have, that type of supply and demand, the honest type of supply and demand works. But what these, what these legal thieves did, that's the executives, what they did is they said, wow, pandemic occurs. Uh, we can use a lot of stuff as an excuse just to jack up prices, which is what they did. And then, to the uninformed, they just blame Biden for this jacking up of prices. By the way, uh, Katie Porter, Representative Katie Porter of California, proved that the 9% inflation that we had over the last, last year sometime and, and subsequent uh, higher inflation, that 50% of that inflation wasn't caused because of supply chain problem, avian flu, and all of that that reduced supplies. It was caused because the people, like the GM executives, could raise prices and use the excuse of the pandemic and supply chain problems for the issue. That's, that's the game they played on the American people. So the American people blamed their government while the fat cats, the exec that raised their prices, the ones who said, we can make a $3.1 billion profit if we raise prices. That's what happened to the cars. All these profits that you see GM is making the, the record profits that all these companies are making at, on Wall Street right now, you turn on CNBC that you see, that isn't because they're paying their workers more. That isn't because of supply chain problems. That is categorically because, categorically because of what again? 
they have pricing power. Randy, thank you so kindly for that contribution. Randy, thank you so kindly for the contribution for that one year, uh, that sustainer for one year. Thank you so kindly. All right. Uh, uh, please, folks, give a call at 713-526-5738, extension one to donate, extension two to talk. And we want to give uh, Randy a big clap for being the first donor of the Politics Done Right this morning. We need about 15 more of what he just did. I thank you so kindly, Randy. Now, going back to the going back to the statement, I, I want all of our listeners to understand this because when you're watching the news and when you're watching Republicans against Democrats and Democrats against Republicans blaming each other for things, right? The truth of the matter, it's not Republicans or Democrats to blame on these particular issues. It is a private sector. Now, where, or where is the blame coming? The blame comes from Democrats and Republicans not regulating to prevent the pilfer by these corporations, right? I'm going to get back to GM in a minute, but for those who haven't listened to Politics Done Right all the time on my three o'clock show where we go through some of the economics of these things, and, and even here, I want to make it clear. All these inflationary things are not caused by government and it's not caused by supply chain problem. And even if they were caused by supply chain problems, the only problems created by the supply or the supply chain problems weren't created by government. It was created by the private sector. Let me digress to another level of indirection. When, when our private sector decided that they wanted to make a one-time increase in profits, they did a magical thing called just-in-time inventory. What is just-in-time inventory? There was a time when warehouses were filled with months of supplies, right? To prevent shocks, a factory burns down, a strike occurs, uh, all these different things, they would keep these 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 fa- these uh, warehouses. Go to go around Chicago, New York, Houston, and watch all those big, huge, empty warehouses. They used to be filled up with supplies for holding things, so that we could keep a good supply of product to prep the market. And if if there's a walkout somewhere, if there's something wrong, you build in from your supply. Well, you know what? These darn guys found out. Hey, we can magically come out with a big, huge profit. We just have to come to just in time inventory, exhaust the inventory we have, and then we make sure that whenever a plant needs supply to build a car, that train gets to that place that week. That week, that product gets into the car and that car gets built. Oh, efficiency. Well, you know, efficiency is great for certain things. But efficiency also means that you can get big shocks. And that's what happened with the pandemic. That's what happened when you have a factory burned down in Vietnam or something in in China or whatever, right? That's what happened when you have hurricanes. When climate change creates hurricanes and hurricanes sink ships or or, 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 uh, containers on ship fall into the ocean and the supply chain is disrupted. But whose fault was that? Your fault, private sector. You don't want to believe in climate change and do what it takes to mitigate climate change. So your a lot of your ships are sinking or your 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 things fall off the ships. You don't you don't want to pay the American worker, so you go pay the Chinese worker pennies on the dollars or the Vietnam worker pennies on the dollar, which means all your products need to be shipped in. You now create a just-in-time inventory so that only the, as the products shipped in, they're put into products to be sold. And if that ship sinks or if there's a hurricane or the container falls off the ship, things slow down, you have less supply, and you charge more. But there's something even more, more sinister about this. As you have supply chain problems and you sell less product, and you sell pro- and, and because you sell less product, you increase the price. Inflation. You increase the price. Even under that condition, as the customer loses because the price is higher for the same product, the the, the corporatist wins. Even under co- that condition, they win. And why do they win? Because they're charging a higher price price for less material, 
they don't even they don't talk about this on TV often, right? Inflation is great for the private sector. Let me give an example. If a barrel of oil cost a hundred dollars, right? So therefore, uh, you buy it at a hundred dollars. If you if you buy a if you buy uh, the oil at a higher price now for the same barrel. You are getting more money for less material. Your shipping costs falls for the same for more money. All these different things fall for the the corporatist. He pays less in shipping. You know why? Because he's shipping less and getting the same amount of money or more. So even under inflationary conditions, their their spread increases. When I say their spread, the amount of per unit profit increases. So you are always in a lose situation for the average American citizen. And then they teach us to say, blame government. No, we don't blame we the people of the United States. We blame those who should be blamed. But if you are uninformed, if you're not well informed, and when I say you're uninformed, I'm not talking about it in the form of a pejorative. I'm saying that is what our media does and why, or I should say do, because media is plural. That's what our media do. Okay. And here, and I, they don't do it at their fault. They do it all because it's a system working on autopilot, right? These guys actually listen to what the corporatists are telling them and they report, they report. Uh, GM says that they made $3.1 billion in profit, but they can't give the workers a large increase because we are are moving to electric cars and the margins on electric cars are smaller than the margin on gas guzzling cars. And therefore, if we look into the future, we can't have those high costs at this point in time because since we're going to be moving to electric cars uh, and the margin is lower, it would affect uh, our viability and you know and then the the media just runs with that story right that's the reason why we have to short the workers well the workers the workers are not making a whole lot of these electric cars right now and even if they were making a lot of these electric cars we all know the economy of scale says that as we start ramping up to make more electric cars the price is going to fall the margins will get much better as they always do because of the economy of scales and because a lot of these things will require less workers over time as you know where we're moving robotics and ai so when they're asking for a four-week workday, these, these strikers are forward-looking. They understand where it's going. Yes, they should have a four-day work week because they are going to need less workers to build these cars. The profit margin, they may say for now, is going to be a bit less. But you know what? The executives got their 40% pay hike over that time. If they so much believed that that uh, they had to curtail raising their labor cost. Well, they should start at the level of the president of the company before they ask those people who build the cars, before they ask the engineers who create the cars, before they ask the secretary who makes sure that things flow to take a cut in salary. It's called honesty. It's called doing the right thing. But you know what? They haven't. You know what? They won't. And you know why they won't? Because we are so misinformed that all these problems we have, we either blame the government, we blame the poor person, we blame the working class, even as we ourselves are working class. It likes crabs in a barrel, crabs in a barrel, eating each other as opposed to looking at the ball, creating all kind of dissension among us instead of loving among each other. And then letting people know the truth, what do we do? We just go ahead and we do what is designed, what they've designed for us to do, fight among each other. Accordingly, it's time GM workers and the whole working class get their fair share. UAW President Sean Fain said in response to the company's earnings report, 
which comes more than a month into the union's historic strike at the big three U.S. automakers, including the surprise walkout at GM's Arlington assembly plant in Texas, the production site of the company's Chevrolet Tahoe Cadillac Escalade, around 45,000 UAW uh, UAW workers are on strike. GM said the strike is costing them $200 million a week in profit. But as CNN noted, the $8.9 billion in adjusted income the company has reported during the first nine months of 2023 is an increase over close to 11% compared to the same period next year. And they don't want to give an increase even as they continue to make money on top of money on top of money. Folks, it's time for us to wake up. Folks, we should all be supporting our union brothers and sisters. We should all be out there writing up ads, writing emails, uh, talking in chat rooms in defense of it's time for the working class to take over. I wrote a book called, and it's, it, it, it's not even a new book now, but it's still relevant. As I see it, class warfare, the only resort to right-wing doom. The reason I wrote that was to illustrate all these things that happen under our noses that we don't know. Come on in, Bard. Welcome to Politics and Right. Hey, Bert. So I had a question for you. Y yes, sir. Uh, Talk to me. So we all know that over the past 20 years, Sheila Jackson Lee has been a really bad boss. But yes. now... We hear this this conversation that she had with her staffer mm -hmm. that he recorded, and we find out that she is a true monster of a boss. Mm -hmm. And so my question to you was, and I haven't heard you talk about this, are you going to, you and Melissa, are you going to change your vote now that you find out how bad she really is? Um, first of all, the congresswoman is, I am going to come out. I shouldn't do this, but I will. I'm going to come out in the full defense of the congresswoman. And uh, the congresswoman is not a very nice boss, as I've seen and as I've known for, for decades. And that is just how some people run the show. I'm not here to defend the congresswoman for how, uh, what kind of a boss she is when she gets upset or mad. I mean, people can look at that their way. I have had bosses all along my career, uh, mostly men. And they have done things, orders of magnitude worse than Sheila Jackson Weed, and they are well respected. I've watched the president talk about grabbing women by their you know what. I've watched a, a senator. I've watched all these things occur. I will not allow what, uh, what others have done to release this tape. Look, first of all, I am not defending her at all. I'm not voting for her for how she treats this this person that she really uh, dragged out on at all. That's not what I'm judging her for. I'm judging her for what's best for Houston right now. For all of those who decide, you know, th this stuff was came to manipulate your mind, Bard. And it, uh, this this tape was released to say, look at the bad thing the congresswoman did. Look at how she spoke to her employee. Let's now she cannot be the mayor of Houston. Have uh, there, listen to many others, likely including our brother Whitmer. You don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Often, I know what go on behind closed doors in a lot of different places, including places where I've worked. I've only worked for another company five years of my entire life. So what I'm saying. Voting, uh, not voting for uh, not voting for uh, for Sheila Jackson Lee. I'm going to tell this message to everybody who's listening to me. If you decide to not vote for Sheila Jackson Lee because of that one tape you heard of how she spoke to her employee. I can tell you stories about being with Sheila Jackson Lee in North Carolina and watching how she deals and, and conducts herself with her constituents. And I'm going to tell you something. More than anything else, I want somebody, that person that I saw, how she dealt with her constituents and how she ragged on her employee when they did not deal with the constituent appropriately. So, Bard, uh, that tape didn't tell me anything I couldn't have surmised. That tape will not change my vote. In fact, you're going to hear a piece that I, the, a, a question that I asked Whitmer on PBS yesterday. And I'm going to play that a little bit later. Again, the best person, in my humble opinion, and that's who I'm voting for, based on what Houston needs, is a is a woman, and unlikely because of the nurturing nature that that I I, I have in that. And for me, that person is going to be Sheila Jackson Lee. And, and nothing that it, it, folks can try all the dirty politics they want. 
It's not going to work. Go ahead, Bard, your turn. Well, maybe it'll be good if she gets in there and starts trashing some of these City of Houston employees. Maybe it'll get uh, them- <laughs> <laughs> I knew you would say, you, hey, Bard, Bard, Bard. You know, know, sitting around in the Bard. All day. Hold on, Bard. Bard, brother. Hold on a second. You know, I just knew. I just knew. I, I, there's something in, in my head that knew that's how you were going to come back, you know. <laughs> well, it's true. That was a good one, Bard. Your vote. Uh, Bard, that was a good one. Hey, you get an A plus for that one, okay? Okay. I'll call Have you a good tomorrow. one. Have a good one, brother. All right, folks. 713-526-573. Hey, guys, I only have one contribution so far. I need more. Please, we have to raise $5,000 for this show. At least 300 and Well, now it's going to be like 375 a day. I want to thank those who gave yesterday. You guys are wonderful. And a great donation from Howard yesterday. I mean, uh, Harold yesterday. Love you guys. Please keep up the great thing. Let's really jump to Ilan Ilan real quick, and then we'll jump to Johnny. Come on, Ilan Ilan. Yes, I'm a sustainer subscriber. Uh, contribute each month. Thank you so, so kindly, my brother. Uh, real quick point. Um, uh, right now, uh, in the last two or three hours, Alcapulco has been slammed by Hurricane Otis at Category Five. Oh no! Uh, I didn't. And also, but also Yemen. And uh, Bangladesh, uh, different places are getting typhoons, hurricanes, uh, cyclones, whatever they call them in that part of the world. Uh, but Yemen especially can't afford it. But uh, they were hit by a similar type storm. But um, um, my uh, comment on the Israeli-Gaza situation is the U.S. has aircraft carriers in the Mediterranean. The U.S. could be carpet bombing Gaza Gaza right now, but not bombing with explosives, bombing with food and medicine by parachute uh, from the aircraft carriers. And um, so that would uh, help alleviate against the genocide being done by Israel and, uh, you know, the uh, media keeps calling them the invaders, settlers. <laughs> but anyway, um, and I predict that Sheila Jackson Lee uh, is going to lose because of what's going on in the House of Representatives. She has to be there to vote on that stuff, and she's not here to campaign. But uh, hopefully she'll do an intensive campaign if and when she can get back to uh, Houston to do it full time. I, so, uh, I, I there would, is a, uh, Elon, not to interrupt you. I just want to say, I, I, I don't want to say that she will lose because I know there's a concerted progressive campaign, shadow campaign that has nothing to do with her right now. That is in progress. So I think a lot of people are going to be quite surprised at her performance. I think if, if things if things turn out the way I'm seeing right now in the background, because I think people are starting to see that um, that what what look, Whitmer is a, is a Democrat. And I, you know, I, I don't speak ill will of of the person per se. He's just not the right person for Houston, in my humble opinion. And I think there's a good shadow campaign going along. And uh, I think people should raise their head out and just go out there and vote as soon as this stuff is realized. Go ahead, Elan. Yeah. So uh, anyway, um, the um, the uh, uh, the the uh, without her uh, voice, uh, you know, and act, actual presence, uh, she's uh, at a great disadvantage uh, with the campaign. But anyway, I, I've been watching hurricanes since 1955. Uh, Back when uh, you had to draw your own map and mm-hmm. track them by latitude and longitude, uh, in the southern half of the world, where the uh, circulation of uh, cyclones is uh, clockwise, but Vanuatu is getting hit by a storm. So I've, I have 
never seen so many category three, four, five uh, super typhoons, etc., in the world as I have this year. Uh, you know, this uh, hurricane season all, all over the world. So Houston really lucked out in not getting hit by something, but uh, still there were many uh, storms and uh, places like Puerto Rico are still trying to recover. And so anyway, uh, that's another proof of the so-called global warming. Climate and change. Like go along with that. Hey, look, thank Elon, you. first of all, before you, before you go, Elon, before you go, thank you for bringing that. Secondly, thank you for being a sustaining member. And folks, we de- do need more sustaining members at 713-526-5738, extension number one to, to sustain, to, to give us whatever you can. Uh, so please give us a call. Um, but yeah, Elon, uh, you brought up something that I, I think people need to be aware of, not because we didn't get hit in the United States real hard this year, I mean, it's not happening and, and it's not happening around the world. Thank you for bringing that awareness. I think it's important for us to know that we actually lucked out. But that when it hits, and if it hits Houston directly, our entire economy, entire economy, if those uh, oil refineries go down, is in shambles. Thank you so kindly for calling, Elon. That's so right. Thank you. All right. Let's go to Johnny. Come on in, Johnny. Uh, There we go. You're on now, Johnny. I love Elon. Elon's quote, specifically his suggestion about airlifting, parachuting supplies. Yes. It's like we did during the Berlin airlift. Remember that? The Berlin airlift. Yeah. 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 But uh, right. let me tell you something, Johnny. I want, I, I, sorry to interrupt. I don't like to interrupt, but I want to say this because I'm not talking about Israel and Palestine on this, on my show on air. I let people say whatever they want to say, but I'm not going to comment about it because of issues. I also am going to, um, but if you want to hear my actual view on that, my three o'clock show is where I talk about Israel and Palestine. Go ahead, brother. You have a three o'clock show on KPFT or somewhere else? No, no, it's just on internet. Same way that you can reach me at uh, politicsandright.tv. Same internet. Go ahead, brother. Anyway, so I would love for Joe Biden to order the military to do an airlift like we did in Berlin. And, and I would love for him to challenge the, that dictator Netanyahu to see what he would do. I bet. That, like all bullies, Netanyahu would stand down because Big Daddy, Sugar Daddy, who makes his welfare payments for him every month. There you go. Year, what a, often they do it, would stand down. Johnny, Here's please don't let me. Johnny, Johnny, please don't let me get into that discussion, my brother. Change the subject. Please go to something else, sir. <laughs> I'm about to if you let me. Okay. Okay. So this is for Bart. This is for Bart. Right, Bart. I hope you're listening. When you talk about leadership style and you want to bring up Sheila Jackson Lee, and I think it's because she's a black woman, but let's forget that. Wait, wait, no, don't, 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 let's, let's hold that up. Let's not say that. Go ahead, though. Well, I said it's out, it's out the bag now. Too late. Anyway, uh, how about Franklin Delaro Roosevelt and Lyndon Baines Johnson? And there's a third person whose name I shall not reveal just yet. Uh, FDR had a leadership style that was very aggressive. Even though he had to get out of his wheel, out of his uh, crutches to do it, this is this has been re, re, been relayed by witnesses in the cabinet many many times, and he got stuff done. Similarly, yes. Baines Johnson, a southern a southern Democrat, also was had even a more obnoxious reputation and language and course and physicality, and he got stuff done. Except he failed to, to act aggressive with his own people. Uh, uh, when they betrayed uh, the, the National Trust and committed treason, undermining his peace peace plan that he was about to enact. Just You're like right. They took Carter. So, now, what about Donald Trump? Donald Trump, he's never had a tantrum in the White House. He's never thrown plates over the fireplace with ketchup all over the wall. Please, yes. don't preach to us about Sheila Jackson Lee. Quit examining the speck in other people's eye when you got a, a log Hey, Johnny, 
Thank you for bringing that up. I got I got a whole bunch of calls and I need people to call in as well to donate. But Johnny, you nailed it with that last comment. I'm not I'm not going to let people play with our minds like, oh, Sheila cussed out a, a a an employee who taped her and released it at an opportune time just when early voting begins. Folks, don't be snowed into screwing your vote up. That's all I'm going to tell folks. Hey, Johnny, as usual, the mayor of politics done right. Thank you. But I got to jump to Harry, then Melissa, then Jeff, then Brian. OK, let's go to Harry. Come on in, Harry. And it, today I have to be kind of quick with everybody now that the lines are filled up. And please call 713-526-5738. Hit extension one. We only have one supporter so far. We need five, ten more, please. All right. Go ahead, Harry. Good morning, uh, Gilberto. Good morning, I wanted- brother. I missed you yesterday, but talk to me now. Short, short uh, call today, I, though. I just, well, I, well, I got to do it fast because you, you got all these other callers that you got to get to. I just want to congratulate you again on edifying the public about corporate greed, about the workers being hosed, and kudos and for the United Auto Workers. They got to keep yes. fighting to get the pay that they deserve uh, because these corporate greed people tend to, as you were talking about private sector, they tend to vote uh, Republican because they want to keep low taxes. And then they want to distract people and and, and and keep people fighting amongst each other uh, for uh, the crumbs and maybe a few people get paid more, but they just want people to work harder for less. And then they want to blame Joe Biden because they he's a Democrat and they would rather see a Republican back in there uh, that will do uh, what Trump did to further the tax cuts and keep taxes low on them. Thank you and, very and- much. Thank I got look all six lines are up. Uh, uh, Harry, love you. Okay, Th- okay. Thank you. Got to go. All right. Have a good rest all right, of the day. All right. Bye. All right. Let's go to Melissa. Come on in, Melissa. Okay, Melissa, he'll hit you up in a little bit. Uh, we're, we're, he's full. His hands are filled up today. Uh, let's go to Melissa. Meli- there you go. You're on Harry, now, Melissa. Good morning. Yes, I hear you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Houston. <laughs> okay, three things. Sheila Jackson Lee, black, strong, minority. Got to be tough. You can't be tough. You can't stand the heat. Get out the kitchen. Um, so the weather guys, CERN, okay? I don't believe it. I'm not conspiracy mind say CERN. So, and then the, 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 and then the last thing, what else what were you talking about? Free Palestinians. Yeah. Good night. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, thank you so kindly. And thank you for being prompt, my dear, beautiful Melissa. Let's jump to Jeff. Come on in, Jeff. Good morning. Egberto. Good morning, Jeff. How are you doing this morning, sir? I'm doing fine. Okay, uh, we got to go fast to today because the calls that. keep coming. Thank you, my okay, brother. Okay. I was going to talk about corporate. I was going to talk about corporate greed. We'll never agree with the. Uh, I'm a stockholder in companies, and uh, I like my I like my dividends. But we're not going to talk about that. Uh, Sheila Jackson Lee. I have a friend of mine that works in the restaurant business. He waited on them and their table one time, and the aide came up to him. First thing he said was, "You don't talk to the chief, you don't talk to the congressman. You talk to me." And my buddy said, "No, I'm going to ask her for an order." And they and the aide said, "Well, no, we don't do that. She doesn't talk to you guys. She is a she is a egotistical, narcissist person that you'll ever meet." And okay, let I, me uh, le- okay let me stop you right there. Let me stop Johnny you right there. Up, uh, Johnny brought up Jeff. Johnny Jeff. Jeff. Up, you know, about all the past, but you know what, Johnny. Stop living in the past. Let's talk about what's going on. Okay, now. Jeff, Jeff, I don't have a lot of time, but I want to tell you this, okay? I want because I don't want to leave that unanswered. Like I said, I know the Congresswoman personally. You have to be careful about what all all the people say about her and all of that kind of stuff. You could likely say that about any man that's out there. It's not true. I can tell you one thing about how she treats her constituents, okay? But that's fine. I understand that there's a reason. It's easy. It's easy. It's very easy to put a hurting on women specifically, black women specifically. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, Open your eyes, my brother, and try to look at things objectively. And let's think about what policies would get executed. But we talk another time when we have more time, Jeff. Thank you for calling. Let's go to Samantha. Come on in, Samantha. Uh, Hi, Amberto. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm supposed to make 
I just wanted to see if I can make my point. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it brief. Uh, one thing that I noticed uh, that was happening in the elections is basically where, you know, the January 6th incident occurred and uh, that they claimed that the election was stolen uh, is because, you know, a lot of pe- people who are Democrats, who are liberals, progressives, third party, they don't they don't talk about politics as much as the Republicans do. They don't have a bigger voice as the Republicans do. They decide when, who they're going to vote for and when they're going to vote. And, and they just get out there and they make their votes. They, they, they choose their votes. They decide they don't, they don't, they don't tell people who they're going to vote for. They know they're a Democrat and that's where they stand. This is where they come in and say, you know, this is how, how Joe Biden and Kamala Harris won. It, 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 they were sure it, that they were going to win, but 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 they actually didn't get the the, the electoral uh, vote. Uh, well, it, it was just a matter of people who were our Democrats didn't uh, just showed up at the polls, knowing the whole time didn't answer. They don't answer that when they Samantha, say, "I'm a Democrat. This is who I, I going to vote." And, I uh, agree. Yeah. I agree with you. And let me just tell you, we have to change that, though. Those people that are Democrats have to change that because we are in a different world where we have all kind of marketing things going on and where people have influence in the mind. So where you are absolutely right. It also means uh, that modal has to change to fit the time that we're in. You got to be active. You got to be political. That's why we do what we do. And I thank you so kindly for calling into the program, Samantha. That's why I think Sheila Jackson is going to win because you know people already know who they're going to vote for. The Democrats know that we're going to vote for Sheila Jackson. Well, Lane. we already what, the one. But she, Samantha, 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 I need to interrupt uh, you. Uh-huh. I need to interrupt you because we need to get out of here. But here's the deal, Samantha. It's not enough to just say she's going to win. If you want her to win, you make sure your auntie, your granny, your child, your granddaughter, your mother, all of these folks are going to go out there and vote. Thinking she's going to win because she should win is one thing. Going out there and doing the work is what they are doing. Um, those people who want others to win, they're doing the work. Folks, uh, uh, the folks who want progressives to win have to start doing a bit more work. That's all I need to say, my dear Samantha. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. Let's go to Derek. Come on in, Derek. Hey, quickly. Uh, the... Uh if you try and do your pledge online, it, it's not going through, Alberto. I tried, so I'm going to have to call it in. But what I want to say quickly is these hypocrites act, act as though they have never had to get into somebody's behind for messing up. All this is is a political trick to paint the picture of the angry black woman. That's what it is. Okay, Derek, I agree with you like 100 percent. It's something my wife said. It's something my daughter said. It's something my white Jewish friend called me up when it came out and said it is something. My, I mean, it is something that we those that are true progressive, those that believe in honesty, morality and are anti-racist. They all they understand what's going on here. What buttons usually gets pushed. It's like at, right at the right time you you get people to to vote their fears instead of vote their interests. And this happens. Thank you for saying that, Derek. Please call back and hit number one to contribute so I can thank you on here. Well, I can thank you right now before you even give, but please go ahead. Thank you for the support that you're going to give the show when you call back 713-526-5738 and hit option number one. Thank you, Derek. Okay, thank you. All right, let's go to Brian. Come on in, Brian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first off, Sheila Jackson Lee has had 11 chiefs of staff in the last 11 years. That should tell you something right there. Okay, stop right gonna, there. Okay, whoa, 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 stop right there. Uh, stop right so there. How We're going to take. Gonna treat the voters. Wait, you wait. Get what you vote for. Oh, stop, stop, mate. I want to ask you one thing. You said in in 11 in, in these years that she has worked, she had 11 chiefs of staff. President Trump was in office for four years. How many chief of staffs did he have, sir? You're living in the past. Talk about no, right no, 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 no. You're living in the past. If you just, Seven. you just lived in, you Seven. just lived in the past, sir. Seven. When you spoke about Sheila Jackson Lee. Seven. When did this t- the interview take place? If she's going to treat the, her staff this way, how is she going to treat the voters? Again, I, I gave you, I, I, I gave you, I gave you, sir. I gave you my experience in North Carolina. How she got on her staff because of how they treated their her constituents who was out there in North Carolina for the Democratic Convention. I just told you I witnessed that with my own eyes. You are saying what you're hearing through third parties. Stop. 
I work in a very, very rough atmosphere. If HR gets a hold of something like that, that woman's fired. If a man well, talks to another man like that, he gets his butt whipped, buddy. And you know you what, know, sir? Like, that is not true. I'm telling you, and if you worked in I've seen, environments. Well, I've, I've seen 10 fist fights for less than half of what she said to a, to a man. Brian, let's speak <laughs> one at a time. Fight. Brian, let me tell you. You ask any American worker out there about how bosses have treated them. It makes your statement false. It may be written that that is how things should happen. In the reality is it doesn't happen that way. I remember working at Daniel Industries and my wife would call me periodically about how this particular person treated and demeaned women in the office day after day. And he was one of the most respected people in the company. So, Brian, I mean, don't judge uh, as Sheila Jackson Lee differently than you would judge uh, uh, Joe Biden different than you would judge Donald Trump. If you can support a Donald Trump, supporting a Sheila Jackson Lee is peanuts because Donald Trump has exponentially, has exponentially higher disregard for people than anything you can come about with a Sheila Jackson Lee or most human beings, to put it bluntly. So, Brian, let's be let's be measured not, here and be not, honest. Not go ahead. Make another go to another not subject. Not go ahead. No, we're not talking about Trump. We're talking about Sheila Jackson Lee and how she treats people. Don't, no, don't I, push the subject off. She's a I, sorry woman. Well, you can. Like that, that's a sorry individual. Well, Thanks, sir, then, sir, then you should look at everybody who have done that as sorry. OK, so anyway, folks, uh, 713-526-5738. Please hit extension number one to contribute. We are way behind in contributing today. We've spent a whole lot of time speaking to my brothers and sisters on air. I ask you so kindly call 713-526-5738 extension number one. Uh, we got to get out of here now, but beforehand, let me just tell you folks, I want folks to be measured. When uh, the Sheila Jackson tapes got released, I, I got taped, first of all, for this exact purpose, to use it at an opportune time. I want everybody to think about how bosses have treated them before and ask if any upset boss have ever treated you that way. I can tell you one thing. I have been treated that way in corporate America. I am not defending that kind of treatment. I just won't make it determine my vote. My vote will be determined by policy. Anyway, let me jump to Jack real quick before we end the show. Jack. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh... $3.1 billion by GM profits last quarter. Yes. 5,000 workers walked out of the most profitable plant. Yes. You do the math. Absolutely. Anyway, folks, thank you so kind of listeners. Thank you. Callers, thank you. Whether you agreed or not, I love you guys. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Rights, and you know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.